our full study. Today we pick up 21st video and we pick up the New Testament. We're all done. 147 foolish things we've gone through in the Old Testament, punly speaking, about the fool and his ways. And we pick up today 148 Matthew 5 22 about the fool. And Jesus says, But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be danger of hell fire. I guess I'm going to hell. If you were to apply Matthew, as many Christians and churches do, you apply Matthew to the church, I'm going to hell. Outside of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that I am forever his, I'm in the family of God, I can't lose it, it's not mine to be lost. These things have I written unto you, that you may know you have eternal life. If you were to apply Matthew to the church, as many do, and do foolishly, I'm going to hell. I've called many people a fool and meant it. Now John writes that we not to hate our brethren. I, I have no brethren I hate. No matter how many times they step on my toes or, or what you know pain and sorrow they cause me. I don't hate them. I pray for them. And it says whoever is angry with his brother without a cause, that even follows the statement that Paul writes, be angry and sin not. No. I've been angry in sin, and I confess that sin, and I'm not going to hell. But when you take Matthew chapter 5 into context, and when you study to show thyself a truth and a God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, calling someone in the tribulation period, which I am not going into, though some people think the church is, the church isn't, Calling them a fool will be a crime. When Jesus Christ is seated on David's throne in Jerusalem, it will be a crime for you to call, go up to somebody and call them a fool. Wisdom abounds. Knowledge is there. Understanding. The Lord Jesus Christ. So, watch what you say in name calling. And you could be wrong. I can be wrong. I've dealt with many people and their actions to the gospel and to the Bible is foolish. Now they may be great scientists. They may be a great doctor I'm talking to, accountant, somebody who does taxes. But in the realms of the Bible, in the realms of God, they're foolish. So let's take real quick Matthew 12, 36. Matthew is not a church age book. It's a book written to the Jews about their Messiah, about their King. Matthew 12, 36, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. That can be applicable to the Christian. We're going to be judged. And I guarantee you, all our words will have to stand before our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we got to be careful what we say, but we're not going to go to hell saved by calling someone a fool. In a millennium, you'll be in danger. Matthew 7, 26. Jesus speaking. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, the word of God, because Jesus is God, and doeth them not. James says, be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And then the storms came, and the house fell. What's the fool here? Again, we're in Matthew, we're giving an illustration. The fool can be also a Christian here. 
he has not regarded, he is not listening, and he's not doing the words of Jesus Christ. Now, when Jesus told his disciples and tell us, go in all the world and preach the gospel, and you don't, and you let your light shine, you let your goodness flow, you give, and, and you try to be a flowing flower in, in the people around you's life. The Bible says you're a fool. I've liked them to a gospel movie. We have a gospel night at the church. and Go ye all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That is the words of Jesus Christ. And if you don't do it, you are a fool. You just might as well go build your house and let the storms tear it down. It's that simple. But the Bible says, love your brethren. Well, him, he's an exceptional cause. He's a loophole. No, it's, you're a fool. When Jesus said, marvel not that the world hates you, know that it hated him first. Well, all the world loves Jesus. You're a fool. Now, there I go again, calling you a fool, and in Matthew 5.22, I'm going to hell. But rightly divine the word of truth and rightly divine what you look at and what the Bible says and what Jesus said. And if you go against that, you do your own thing. Jesus said you're a fool. It's that plain and simple. If thou shalt confess thy sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. If you don't confess your sins, you're a fool. And then you'll have all your words, all your actions set for be wood, hay, or stubble. When Paul says, give, give not grudgingly, give up the heart, give willingly, and you don't, you're a fool. It's that simple. So see, there I go again, calling people fools. With the word of God in its proper context. Like I say, when I call somebody a fool and I, I'm preaching the gospel and they come up interrupting and they come up with nonsense and then they turn around and say they're a Christian. Eh, eh. No, you're a fool. You're a fool. When you try to interrupt the word of God being preached and you try to give us your words, your ways. When Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. A person that's not foolish would step up and say, hey, can I hold one of those signs? Can I uh, get some of those gospel tracts and pass them out? Can I have your name to pray for you? Can I pull you off the side when you're done? I got some questions. I... Here's that. Matthew 23, 17. Matthew 23, 17. Ye fools and blind, for which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? Are you really interested, you worldly Christians? Jesus Christ called people fools. That loving Jesus. That Jesus that would not hurt a flea. Got in their face and said, you're a fool. Speaking to the lawyers, speaking to the religious hypocrites, speaking to the people, you're a fool. Look how great this temple is. Look how great the gold is. You fool. 70 AD, got, the Romans are going to come in and tear this whole place down. Matthew 23, 19. Ye fools and blind. For whether it's greater to give or the altar that sanctified to give. Get Got right in their face. It wasn't the, the altar. It was that specific animal that had to be specifically done by the law for that particular instance, whether it be a trespass offering, whether it be the burnt offering, whether it be a sin offering, whether it be, you know, the morning sacrifice or the evening sacrifice or a Sabbath sacrifice. Jesus has shown us men are fools. Matthew 5, 22. You don't like it. 
If you don't like it, you're not a Bible studier. Jonah was foolish for God said, go into Nineveh and preach to the people. And he ran the other way. Again, watch this. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Rekha shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Jesus just two places. Matthew 23, 17, 23, 19 called them a fool. Do you think Jesus is going to hell? Do you think Jesus is in hell today? And I guarantee there are people out there who have used the word fool and offended them. And they probably think I'm a person bound for hell. Nope. The very words of Jesus Christ. Used properly. In Matthew 12, 36, if it's idle words coming out of my mouth, I will be judged at fault. But I'm talking to somebody who has not done the word of God. Who values worldly things more than they value the word of God and God himself. You're a fool and I have the right to call you a fool. Now graduate all your foolishness and come to wisdom, knowledge, understanding of God and the holy and be wise. Remember part of our study shows that fools can be wise. We also learned that wise can become fools. Either way. In Matthew 25, 2, another passage of scripture taken way out of context. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. This is the parable. And they say it's the church age. It's not the church age. The church is already at the wedding with Jesus Christ. These are the guests of the wedding. And the Bible says, and we're not going to get into a doctrinal study. We're going to, ten of them, five were wise and five were foolish. Jesus called people foolish. The scriptures call people foolish. And we have done 152 right now. We have done 152 fools. Full, foolish men are fools. And more so, and properly so, for those who go against the scripture, Old or New Testament. So what would Jesus do? If you don't adhere to the scriptures, you don't do what God told you to do, you're a fool. That's what Jesus would do. And by the way, that's Jesus speaking again in Matthew 25, the word, John 1, 1. Matthew 25, 3. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Foolish is because they did not prepare. They brought the lamps with oil, but they didn't bring no extra oil. Preparation was poorly done. Well, you see, last week I bought a loaf of bread, a gallon of milk, and a thing of butter. And it cost me actually $5.36. I need the same thing, so I'm going to bring $5.36 this week. The prices may went up. And you'll have to put something back. There was no preparation for an increase. There was no preparation that I may need something extra. How many times have we been fooled? We ran out of gospel tracts. We didn't bring gospel tracts. We forgot them. I've been a foolish on that hand. I have come up to people who are lost and, and gone to reach for a gospel tract, and there's none. My lamp is empty. The Holy Spirit is a type of the oil, and the Holy Spirit in my pocket is, <laughs> no, and you go look, and you ain't got no. I've been a fool in that place. Unprepared is foolishness. Unprepared. And as a Christian, you don't realize that for Christians, there's the judgment seat of Christ coming, that you are able to earn crowns and rewards and inheritance. If you don't prepare, if you don't set forth to do, Wooden hay and stubble. 
is foolish. When there's no rewards, no crowns, and no inheritance, that's foolish. In Matthew 25, 8, And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us our oil, give us your oil, excuse me, for our lamps are going out. We need you, wise people. Give us because we don't prepare what you prepare. Then they come relying on you. And if the wise were to give up their bounty, like the liberal Democrat wants us to give to those who don't have, and then the wise won't have it. And the wise would give the illustration to the fool is, next time maybe you'll learn better. Maybe next time you're prepared. You know? When that cashier said, hey, you got to put something back. That cashier is not obligated to take money and give it to you so you can bring home your items that you wrongly concluded to the fact that you're wrong and foolish. So we're done with Matthew. Move on to Mark. Mark 7, 22. Mark 7, 22. It's not pleasing to God that we are fools. Notice I said we. I've been a fool. Sorry to admit it. Now we'll look at Mark 7, 21. Jesus speaking. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murder. That all comes out of the heart, but we're not done. Thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Jesus says the heart of being a fool comes from your heart. And did we not read somewhere in the Psalms that says the fool has said in his heart that there's no God? Again, you're going to spend billions and trillions of trillions of dollars on the public school system to educate their brain. And it's not their brain, it's their heart. You're going to get psychiatrists just popping these pills because of a brain problem. It ain't a brain problem. To help and aid and structure for this nation to get right in God would be the preacher and a King James Bible. We'll get America right. When you get rid of religion, when you have Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life, and nothing else, you kick the monkey evolution out the door. You bring in God as creator. You bring in the Bible. You take out this perverse sexual education and they don't even know who they are out of school. And you have, we're going to have a class where we're going to read the Bible. We're going to have a class where we're going to bring in properly trained men of no Hebrew, no Greek. We're going to go through the Bible from kindergarten all the way to graduation teaching them from the Bible. But don't worry, that's not going to happen. Foolishness by Jesus Christ, the creator of all things, God manifested in the flesh, said that the foolish comes from the heart, so psychiatry is not going to work, your pills are not going to work, and your great thoughts of whatever you think is stupid and boneheaded and foolish. You got to do with the heart, you got to deal with the soul, you got to do with the spirit. You want to get rid of foolishness. The best thing to deal with a fool is bring in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with prayer. That the seed will be planted and break that foolish ground. That results could happen. The foolishness is not brain, it's not the mind, it's a heart issue. It's not something that medical doctors can help. It must be done by God and God alone. Luke 
eleven forty. Luke eleven forty. See, man is using brain power, his degrees, when he should be using the Bible and God and not the great man. The great man was made by God, but that's not taught in the schools. So we look at Luke 11:40. Ye fools. Jesus. Come on, couldn't you use a little more love? You fool, you fool. Did not he that made that which is without, made that which is within also? He's addressing the Pharisees, the religious people of his time. The religious people. Today would be the Lutherans, the Catholics, the Jehovah Witnesses, uh, the Unificationists, and, and uh, I'm forgetting religions. This is how Jesus today would, the re religious people, the strictest religious sect of Israel, the Pharisees, who do things to the T, who do things to the letter of the law, who are proper, who have a good show of religion, Jesus says you're a fool. That's what Jesus thinks of religion. What would Jesus do? He'd walk up to that Catholic priest and say, you're a fool. Go get married and get yourself a wife. He say to the Catholic priest, you're a fool. Doesn't the Bible say you're not supposed to eat? And drink the blood. When he tell the the the, the more you fool, there's no life out there in the other plants. They are they're wicked and satanic. He tell the Jehovah Witness, I am God. Thomas said, My Lord, my God. What are you gonna do with that? Jesus would say to these religions that it's okay to be queer, it's okay to be sodomite. The word of God says, I am the word of God says, it's an abomination for a man to be with man and with a woman to be with a woman. It's abomination. What would Jesus do? He called religion foolish, fool. You don't want that Jesus. You don't like that Jesus. Luke 12, 20. Luke 12, 20. But God said to him, Jesus speaking, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be quiet of thee. Then who sh then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? God will call man fool. God is Jesus and Jesus is God. Together they will call a man a fool. When will they call a man a fool? When he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. The very fact is, I am casting you off into hell, and I will cast you off in the lake of fire that burns forever, because you're a fool. The Bible already says, the fool has said in his heart twice that there's no God. God will call every atheist a fool. properly addressing people who don't know the scriptures saved or lost according to the bible you have that right you better use it correctly or you'll be judged by your idle words you could be called a liar you are obligated to call them what they are fool they may not like it they may not take it they may have to get a blue and a red pill for that day but if they are fools does not the bible say we are to rebuke them in season out of season season exhort them are we not to call them who they are fool we've already seen in matthew we've already seen jesus christ we've seen god in luke 
A fool is a rich man with all the earthly means. He with the most toys in the end dies and goes to hell is a fool. He that has a life of luxury and knows not God will not have eternal life. John the Baptist says, if you have not the Son, you shall not see life but the wrath of God abiding upon you, the fool. When a man is, is out in a public ministry proclaiming the gospel, he is the wise one. Those that reject, those that ridicule, those that get mad, those that hate, those that you're the fool. And God will call you through your foolishness. God says about that man preparing the gospel, preaching the gospel, he says, I love them feet. Romans chapter 10. This is Bible. And you have a problem with what I'm saying to you by reading the Bible, you're a fool. And you don't like being called a fool. Well, get out of your fooldom, get out of your foolish ways, get out of your foolishness, believe on Jesus Christ, believe on the Bible, believe on God, and get yourself correct. It's simple. Luke 24, 25. Luke 24, 25. People are going to be shocked with, at either judgment, saved or lost. The same people are going to be really, really in a, awe of what their preacher and their church did not teach them. When they face Christ as their Savior, and they're put wood, hay, or stubble, and gold and silver and precious stones and all that we have done is laid out and put to the fire, not us, our works. As they shiver through the ash to realize ash is ash. And if it's not God approved, it's not going to get you anything. But I, I thought otherwise, you're a fool. Matthew 24, I mean, excuse me, Luke 24, 25. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Wow. He done it again. Speaking to two men on the road, speaking about his death, burial, and resurrection. That is what all is done for the scriptures. And they knew it not, the scriptures, they were full. The fact is that Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, James, Andrew, and, and Thomas, and all his disciples, all those that followed him close, it is a foolish thing that that Sunday morning when Christ arose out of the grave, none of his disciples were there. You know that? Name me one disciple was there at the announcement of those angels. He's not here. He's risen. Not one of them. They were foolish. And Jesus said after three days and three nights as Jonah, they're going to spit upon me. They're going to buffet me. They're going to crucify me. For three days and three nights. When those women came to that tomb Sunday morning, they came with spices for a dead body. They came looking for a dead body. They came looking for a religion, and they got Christianity. Now, I'm not talking about the Roman Catholic Christianity. I'm talking about up from the grave he arose. But they weren't looking for that. What was their foolishness? They did not listen to Jesus. Had they been listening to Jesus, had they comprehended his word, which they did not, Sunday morning, Sunday night into Sunday morning, they would have grabbed their chairs. I don't care if it was a Sabbath. They would not care about the Jewish people. They would have grabbed their chairs, their tent, or their, their blankets and all that. They would have been outside that tomb and waiting and watching for that stone to be rolled away and Jesus to come out and greet them. That wasn't the picture. 
The only ones that were at that grave when Jesus arose from the grave were then the Roman and the Jewish centurion set there to keep their eye on that grave. And he told them, the word of God, the word of Jesus, who is God, said, three days and three nights, I'm coming out. And even Thomas, after he showed up the first time, Thomas wasn't there. He gets all that, oh, unless I put my fingers in the print of the nail and thrust my hand through his side, I will not believe. Fool. You got 11 men in that room. And all the women who have proclaimed that Jesus is living. And you deny it. Fool. Now can you come out of your fooldom? Foolishness? Being a fool? Ask Thomas. My Lord, my God. He got saved. And he believed. Demas was wise to the Lord. Demas got saved, learned of God, followed Paul, with Paul, and part of the ministry. He was wise unto the holy. Then he became foolish by going back to Thessalonica. We can come out of foolish or we can go back into foolish. The right thing is to believe on the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. The foolish thing is to do what religion, any religion, pick one, even the new one. And Jesus would address those leaders of that religion full. A man that goes off in lake of fire for all eternity, God says, full. How dare you call people foolish? Why not? God does it. God's my father. God is teaching me through the scriptures. You all call, call people fools. Jesus did it. He's my groom. I'm his bride. He teaches me the scriptures. I would not throw a fool out there like it was candy. I wouldn't throw it out there like it was a piano that just got broken open. But if you're going to show yourself ignorant of the Bible and the Word of God and who Jesus Christ really is, according to the Scriptures, as much as God has given me wisdom, and you don't match the Bible, don't be upset when I call you a fool. Now, we have done... 158 foolish things in the Bible. The study. We're going to stop there. We're done with the gospel. I have found myself many a time of the 158 pages of the Bible that we have turned to the scripture, to the books, in the chapters, in the verse. Sometimes I have found myself to be the fool that we studied, and I've repented. So when I call you a fool, I'm not saying I'm the greatest, I'm the best of all. I'm a fool too. And the properness of foolishness is to repent. God can forgive the sin of foolishness. 